What up, y'all? DC Fago guy. Tales from the Pit just conducted an amazing interview of Mars, the original sixth pedal of the Lotus. Uh, I'm calling this interview amazing because I wasn't expecting it. I don't think many juggalos were expecting it to hit the way that it did. And it essentially is a tell all interview. They deep dive into the story of how Mars became involved with Dark Lotus. Um, kind of the fallout that happened. It, it, it's a really great interview if you have not seen it, which I think by now it's made enough waves that everybody has kind of seen it or at least knows that it's out there. So if you haven't set aside the time to go watch it, absolutely, definitely do that. But there's there's a lot of great nuggets from this interview, and I don't really want to focus on like the negative things, but I kind of want to just put out my... Uh, my two cents on what I'm taking away from it, just because I've had one person already reach out to me, kind of my thoughts on it. And um, so I wanted to make this video in case there's other people that are kind of like wondering what I thought about it or, you know, just to kind of put my thoughts out there. But for me, this interview was very enlightening for me. Obviously, last year I had already kind of let go of the hatred I had for Twisted and, and opened my perspective on that. And um, I, I won't like reiterate that here, but. Uh, I'll just kind of brush over it a little bit. And a lot of it was just kind of looking at things from their point of view and the fact that I've worked for bad jobs a couple now. I actually, uh, I just started a new job. This is my third week at a new job. Uh, so I've worked at a couple places and I've kind of seen bad business and I've just pretty much looked at their whole situation as like they left what they felt was a bad company. So uh, listening to this interview and listening to Mars kind of talk about things that happened back then, I, I didn't go into it like, oh, wow, oh, my God, I can't believe that fucking happened. I just kind of looked at it like, like, damn, that, that shit was going on even back then. Um, but one thing that I really liked about Mars and really kind of took my respect for him, or because at the time I didn't have respect. I, I knew of Mars, obviously. Uh, the situation for me, I was honestly very sheepish. I was very like naive and just believing kind of violent Jay's side of the story of like this guy came in, used us to gain attention and then bounced. That's literally what was presented to the jugglos. And Mars even kind of mentions that in the interview of like, you know, he was signed to a label. He was kind of being talked into joining psychopathic. And, you know, from the sounds of this interview, like he wasn't intending to do Dark Lotus. He had been talked into it because we all know how excited Violent Jay can get. He's notorious for announcing things and then they never come out because he just gets so excited. He wants to tell everybody about it. I'm kind of that way. I hyper, I, I hyper fixate on things. That's just kind of a, a symptom of ADHD in adults. So uh, I, I get why he would have done that, like getting excited about Mars and the things that Mars knew. And that's why he wanted to invite him. And then, you know, ultimately when he was kind of like, I'm already signed with these guys. So, you know, like I'm, I have no intentions of kind of joining psychopathic records. I could see how that bothered Jay and I can see how that kind of put Mars in a tough situation. So just kind of getting his side of the story really opened up and gave me respect for Mars. And, and what really gave the most respect for Mars is the way he addressed the situation. Now, obviously there's been multiple interviews with other artists that used to be on psychopathic. There's been videos that have come out with people that have worked with violent Jay and not to say that they're not justified for feeling this way, but usually there was always like a level of pettiness or there was animosity for sure. Like they were upset, like they weren't happy with how things were handled. And there were some people that treaded very lightly with it. And, and, and Mars just straight up was like genuine. He just felt so genuine about it. And like, he kind of came into the situation not intending to be there, and he was so respectful with it. You know, when he was talking about how Twisted is is doing Dark Lotus performances now, I think the interviewer asked if he would be interested in going out and doing some of these performances with Twisted, Blaze, and ABK, and he was kind of like, "No, because I wasn't really a I wasn't an original part of that," which is which is crazy because he was on the original first album. Um, but he wasn't there for the beginning processes. He was kind of brought in at the halfway point, And then that's the tales that we ended up getting. So he, just the fact that he respected it like that, phew, respect ultimately gained right there. Now I've listened to the OG version. I know in the past I've talked about, 
Um, the gold version is the one that I've heard first. That's the one that I tend to favor. That tends to happen. The first one that you hear, or the first one that you see or whatever, that's kind of the one you tend to side with. A um, couple years back, I did a listening party where I listened to the OG Tales from the Lotus Pod. And actually from there, I had taken and made like a... I, I, in my iTunes, I changed the album around to kind of jump around to the different versions of the ones that I felt that I liked. And listening to this interview kind of gave me the thought and urge to go listen to the original Tales again to see just how much more I enjoy that that album, that original one. Because I always kind of went with it in the back of my mind of like this, like a lot of people praise the OG. A lot of people will tell you it's the only one that matters to forget the fucking gold one. Um, I actually, what I did with mine is I did this with it. And when you open it up, you'll see that the red book is in there. I kind of combined them because I always felt like them reissuing it never really needed to happen. But I really love the gold cross look better than the the red. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. I just, for me, this is this is the cross we see on all the other albums. So this, for continuity reasons, the gold looks the best to me. I just feel like that's that's just it. Um, so that's the reason that I kind of put that like that. But. Um, I lost my train of thought there for a second, but I want to go back and I want to re-listen to the OG tales just because I always had it in the back of my head from listening to Violent J's side of the story of he used that opportunity to try to gain listeners, which as a musician, that's just, that's just a smart move anyways. But, um, to know that it wasn't anything dirty like that, he was literally talked into doing it. And then when they were trying to talk him into doing other things further and he's kind of like pumping the brakes, like, whoa, like this was cool, but like, I've already got this going for me. Um, just to hear that, I feel like I would go back and listen to this album now and not feel any kind of like, because when Mars would come on, I'd be like, yeah, dude, this guy is fucking killing it on his verses. But it was always like that part of me in the back of my mind was like, yeah, but it's so fucking fucked up the way he did this shit. You know what I mean? Knowing now that that's not at all how it was, I feel like I'm going to go back and listen to this album and enjoy it like tenfold better. So, um, like I said, this this was an absolutely great interview. If you have not seen it, definitely set a time, uh, some time to go watch it. It's definitely worth your watch. They talk about other things too, about how he kind of went away from doing this, uh, you know, from doing like the dark rap and he, he became Christian there for a while and was doing Christian rap. And for those who don't know, he no longer does Christian rap. Like he's very spiritual. And that's, you know, that was part of the appeal that brought, that made Jay go like, yo, you need to be a part of this project. He's still spiritual in, in, in a lot of ways, but as far as the religious thing goes from the sounds of it, he's kind of walked away from that. So if there's anybody out there that, that still thinks that he's a Christian rapper and, and want to poke fun at that, uh, he's moved on from that. So, <laughs> but yeah, definitely go watch this interview. And one thing that he put out there and I tweeted that I think would be absolutely fucking amazing. And I know it would just ruffle so many feathers. He had kind of put out there, uh, the interview had asked and, and Mars was like, yeah, I would definitely be down to do something with Twisted, Blaze and ABK, but call it White Lotus and have it be like the flip opposite side of Dark Lotus. And I think that's a way that we could get an aspect of Lotus to continue without the original Dark Lotus. And I know that thought right there is going to have people pissed off. The thought of doing a type of Dark Lotus without ICP. Um, but to make it White Lotus seems really, really cool of an idea to me. You're flipping the whole concept. You know, we were we were supposed to get superheroes for a long time, never did. It was supposed to be the counterpart to super villains. And I feel like I feel like White Lotus is something that would be absolutely amazing, and I hope, I hope that it actually happens. I, I, I doubt it. I, I doubt that it would happen, but it would be amazing to me just to have that flip side, and to get an essence of the Lotus kind of reborn. For me, that was kind of where I was going with Venomous Five, and it sounds like Monoxide's taken that idea and kind of put it in the grave as well. So, I would love to see that happen, but yeah. That's kind of, that's pretty much it. That's like my thoughts on this whole interview. A lot of respect gained for Mars. Uh, like I said, he shined some light on how the process was of him coming into Dark Lotus. The Some of the studio 
processes was kind of funny too. There's one story they were talking about, and, and I, I won't spoil it. You guys can go watch the interview to, to fucking hear it, but absolutely great interview. If you have watched the interview, tell me down below what you guys thought about it. And uh, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's worth it. I will, I tell you what, I will link it in the description. It's in my community tab too, because I shared it. I was like, this is a must see. Everybody must know about this. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.